It's me, Karkamo, the forger of pain. I'm a pro wrestler that loves video games, horror, and everything anime and geek related. And welcome to my channel. Guys, I'm about to blow your mind because I have the most awesome miss obscured of a hidden gem of a movie that you probably never heard of. You saw the title of the movie? It's called Motorama, directed by Barry Shells. It's almost an impossible feat to talk about this movie without spoiling it. So, for the sake of this review, the first few minutes will be spoiler free. But, but, please stick until the end of the video because I'll get back to it later. But anyway, here we go. Motorama was released in 1991, directed, like I said before, by Barry Shells. He's also famous for directing The Vampire's Kiss, starring Nicolas Cage. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z! That's all you have to do! Motorama's synopsis goes like this. A 10-year-old boy played by Jordan Christopher Michael. This kid deserves an Oscar. And obviously, he didn't get one. But he deserves the recognition. His performance in this story is phenomenal. Like AJ Styles. His character comes from a broken home. He also escapes his douche parents, steals a Mustang, and embarks his way into playing a kind of a lottery game to become a millionaire. Still with me? Well, that's the end of the spoiler free review. I know, I know, by now you might have a lot of questions that need answered, but trust me, that's just the tip, that's what she said, that's just the tip of the iceberg. So join me for the spoiler part of the review. Before you even realize that our quote unquote hero is a kid, we get some suspicious shots of some tiny hands building something while listening to those douche of our parents that I mentioned before arguing. Then we get the reveal that is a kid named Gus. After building the lift, we learn that Gus is not your ordinary kid by the conversation he has with the bank teller. Just because you went through and put them in rolls doesn't mean that I don't have to go through and recount them. All right, then recount them. That could take hours. Then it'll take hours. Gus is at a whole new level compared to kids his age. He's intelligent and a bit of an asshole sometimes. He acts more like an adult than the other grown-ups from the movie. We finally noticed that the lifts were for driving. And this is where we encounter our first question. How in the blue hell does Gus know how to drive? Questions like these never get answered. But you know what? That's fine. Because that's part of the charm of the movie. Wanna play with me? Beat it, kid. The movie clearly tells us that Gus doesn't care for child's play. When Gus left his home, he had no plans, no purpose. He just escaped. The first time he filled up his tank, he got some Motorama cards. And according to the cards, if you get the word Motorama, you'll win like a bajillion dollars. Okay, I mean, it's not exactly the, you know what I mean. And the contest has no due date. That means it lasts forever. So Gus just travels through the United States. The United States? I mean, that's a very good point. The film never establishes location. So I just assume it's the US. 
Anyway, he travels aimlessly from gas station to gas station to complete the word Motorama with the cards. And this becomes the motivation of our protagonist. There's a lot of symbolism thrown into the journey. Some subtle, some not so much. But that doesn't affect the movie in a bad way. Let's not storytell the whole movie in order. Let's talk about the characters Gus encounters throughout the film. Because this movie, it's all about the characters. And most of them, if not all of them, are pretty memorable. Fail the gas man. A Mr. Goody Two-Shoes that only cares of doing the right thing to go to heaven. That's a motivation right there. Like for instance, he took a picture of him shaking the sheriff's hand and he puts the photograph in a kite so God can see it and that way he'll earn his spot in heaven. Oh, I mean, the grown-ups in this movie are pretty gullible and stupid. Like Phil the gas man and the clerk from the motel, who thinks Gus is hiding a girl to, well, you know. Just a second. You don't have a girl with you, do you? No, no girl. Because if you do, that'd be another eight. I don't have a girl. Oh, 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 and I almost forgot. The motel owner is obsessed with hunting squirrels. I forgot to tell you, if you catch any squirrels, give them to me. Yeah, all right. Let me guess, squirrels? I caught seven of the little buggers last night. Good for you. It only takes a Halloween crappy glasses and a mustache to fool everyone in the diner that he's a health inspector. Just, uh, what is that you're cooking? Yankee bean, sir. Smoking while cooking Yankee bean soup. $10 fine. Yes, sir. This, this right here is my favorite scene in the movie where we get the coolest cameo by Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. At this point in the story, Gus needs a hose and a tank to steal some gas. And Flea is like, No, no, I don't think that would be right. I, oh. And Gus gives Flea a buck. Well, you wait right here. <laughs> oh, 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 don't tell anybody. No, no, don't tell anybody. Won't kill anybody. At the moment, you think like, yeah, I mean, I get it. He's just being sarcastic. Like, he'll say he'll do it, but you know, that's just to brush off the kid. But then, you realize that he is in a God-given mission to get those items for Gus. Hey, what's all the racket in here? I have a job, a very important job. I've been paid already for one dollar. One stinking dollar. It's a very important job. Whoa, cool out, sir. <laughs> then the time comes where you come to terms with the movie. And at that moment, you realize Okay, everything goes in this movie. Speaking about cameos, we get a creepy, yet badass performance by Sandy Barron. You know, that guy that portrayed Jack Clumpus on Seinfeld. Take the pen. Oh, no. Go ahead. I couldn't. Come on, take the pen. I can't take Do it. Do me a personal favor. No, favorite. I'm not take comfortable. The I cannot take it. Take the pen. Are you sure? I'm positive. Take the pen. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, thank you. Also, there's Drew Barrymore. And nope, she doesn't have an important role. Actually, that is a cameo. She doesn't contribute anything to the movie. And what's funny is that she's in all the marketing material for Motorama. 
I'm guessing, hey, they have a cool actress, let's milk the shit out of it. The tagline on the DVD cover is a flat out lie. There's only one way to win the girl of your dreams. Florid. I mean, that's not even close to his motivation. He's 10 years old for God's sake. To him, girls are like creatures filled with cooties. But in hindsight, the cast is very rich and awesome. Robert Picard who plays the sheriff, which is one of the few characters to notice Gus is a kid. Where's your dad? Uh, in the woods there, you know, a little rest stop. Couldn't hold it until the next gas station. Your father sure has to go to the bathroom a lot. Meatloaf. I will do anything. Okay, I won't do that, okay? I won't. No, okay, no, okay, no pun intended. I, I won't sing, okay? Who's, you know, you might know him as Bob, you know, Bob that has the bitch test in Fight Club. Anywho, Meatloaf, he's another actor that does a very intimidating performance in this flick. After a few casual and weird encounters, I guess, Gus ends up with a few tattoos and loses an eye. Oh yeah, this movie has plentiful balls. And now that I say this out loud, who is this movie for? There is a scene that involves a random couple having sex in Gus's car while he's distracted counting his Motorama cards. In broad daylight, no less. My second favorite scene in the movie involves Dick Miller. Oh yeah, that underrated actor from the Gremlins. So, he's in a picnic with his wife and kids, and he loses a game of horseshoe tossing to Gus, and he loses 200 bucks, 200 smackaroos. So, what's the logical solution? What would you do? Well, tell your kids it's time to go potty and abandoning your kids! And guess what? The wife! The wife! She's on board with this option! What the hell, movie? What are you? Each scene shows us the lengths that Gus is willing to go to get to his goal, completing the Motorama cards. And that's as far as I'll go with the review. I won't spoil the rest, nor the ending of the movie. Another thing the movie has going for is that it has aged pretty well. It's timeless. I'm not kidding. It doesn't have pop culture references, no hip, cool, or weird slang when the characters speak, and even the money. It's not American dollars. I know, it looks like Monopoly money, but I looked into it. And when I mean that I looked into it, I went to Wikipedia. And, you know, I'm quoting here that the director actually used Dutch guilders. That's money from the Netherlands from the pre-Euro period. So, how come you probably never heard of this movie? Well, for starters, I think this movie was ahead of its time with its themes and tough visuals. It also bombed at the box office making a little over $10,000. Ouch! I remember I saw this movie a couple of times, circa 1993 on HBO, and loved it. Then, I forgot it existed, until quite recently, a friend of mine on Instagram posted a story, and right away I was like, dude, that's Motorama. I haven't met a single living person in my life that saw this movie other than myself. Anyway, I digress. I wanted to talk about this movie because it deserves to be talked about and it needs a lot of love. Besides, the other thing is that there's little to no information about this film. And that's saying a lot nowadays. But really, there's little information about the production of the movie on IMDb and on Wikipedia. There's no Blu-ray, it's in no streaming services. Spread the world, people. Mororama, at the very least, deserves to become a cult status movie. I beg of you, give this movie a shot. I hope you enjoyed my review of Mororama. And as always, this is Karakamo Gaming. Like or die.